Hello, everyone. Welcome to Therapeutic Yoga class today. We're going to do a little bit of a different class today. We are going to do therapeutic yoga for muscle relaxation. Now, what we're going to begin class with today is a list. So if you want to grab yourself paper and pen, and maybe you can jot down my top seven things for muscle relaxation. For our actual class, here's what you're going to need. Your yoga mat, yoga bolster to sit on to start. We're going to do uh, some exercises in sitting first. And then you're actually going to need something to lay on for your spine. So I am going to use a foam roller today. And this is a six by 36 foam roller. There's lots and lots and lots of different foam rollers on the market. But if you've got one that is three feet long somewhere in your house, go grab it right now and we will use it for today's class for a delightful activity to relax the muscles of our spine. If you do not have a foam roller, don't worry, you are not without for today's class because I guarantee you, you chances are have a bath towel in your house. So I want to show you how you can make a mock foam roller at home. So this is just a simple bath towel. If you take the bath towel lengthwise and roll it up, and in fact, if you have two bath towels, it's even better, roll up a second one, you're going to have a roll that's approximately three to four inches wide and has enough firmness that you will definitely feel it through your spinal joints and muscles when we go to lay on it later in class. Unfortunately, I hate to say this, we use our bolsters all the time, but laying on a bolster is too wide to tackle those paraspinal muscles that we're going to be focusing on for muscle relaxation. So yoga mat, yoga bolster, and some sort of something to lay your spine on. Roll towel, or I'm going to use a foam roller today. Now, we're starting class differently. Today, we're starting class with my top seven things I recommend for patients for muscle relaxation. So of course, the very first thing to relax muscles is gentle stretching and yoga. Well, welcome to a therapeutic yoga class. <laughs> it's what we're gonna be doing for the remainder of the class today. So number one on my top seven list. The second thing on my top seven list, we're going to begin class with and we're going to end class with. And what that is called is progressive neuromuscular relaxation. So it's often called PMR, just the acronym for the words. But progressive neuromuscular relaxation is a beautiful way to relax the muscles of your body, sequentially starting at one part of your body and moving down or up or at another part of your body and moving up. So whichever way you do it, we're gonna do it two different ways today. So you've got lots of variability, variability for using progressive neuromuscular relaxation. So that's number two on my list. Now, number three on my list for muscle relaxation is magnesium. Now, a lot of us take maybe magnesium in a multivitamin, but it is nowhere near the amount of magnesium you would actually need to relax your muscles. So I am going to give you three ways that I feel are the best way to get magnesium. Number one is Epsom salt soaks. So you can do a foot bath, you can do a whole body bath. But if you are bathing in Epsom salts, you are bathing in magnesium oxide. Magnesium is one of the best things to relax muscles in your body. Second way to get magnesium is through a supplement, meaning you're orally taking a supplement in on a daily basis. If you are going to take a magnesium supplement every day, please make sure it is chelated. Chelated means it's a form of magnesium that your body can absorb. Now, what are the chelated forms? If you think of a magnesium supplement, it will have the first word, magnesium, and then it will have the second word, citrate, sulfate, glycinate, malate. What you need to understand is whatever the second word is, the last three letters should be A. T E. So I always tell my patients, eat the eight. 
versus Epsom salts are magnesium oxide, I-D-E. Do not eat the I-D because you cannot absorb it as well. Finally, relative to magnesium, and this is my favorite way to eat magnesium, and that is through almonds. Almonds are one of our nutritious items we have to eat every day that are very high in magnesium. So taking a handful of almonds every day does a wonderful thing to relax your muscles. All right, number four on the list. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one. I could spend hours on it. But number four on my muscle relaxation list is cherry juice. If you are a fan of cherry juice because you use it to aid sleep because it's high in melatonin, awesome for you. But what you also need to understand about cherry juice, it is very high in antioxidants. So it has high anti-inflammatory properties and also relaxes muscles. So a couple tablespoons of concentrated cherry juice, or if you're okay with the sugar, just regular cherry juice in your smoothies or in things like that every day are fabulous. Number five on my muscle relaxation list, this one's easy, relative rest. Now that may, may be overuse, from exercising, it might be too much sitting, it might be too much in the yard work, but we have to vary our activity level. With resting relatively, oftentimes people ask me, do I use heat or do I use cold? And here's my answer. If your muscles are tight and sore from activity and you need to relax them, heat is the way to go every time, except if you touch the area that you're thinking about relaxing and it is warmer to touch than the rest of your skin. So if I wanna relax my leg and I feel my leg and it is hotter to touch than say the other parts of my body, then maybe ice would be the best option for you in that perspective. The bottom line is if you look at research between heat and ice relative to muscle relaxation, it is across the board. So it really is based on whatever your personal preference is, but relative rest is number five on my list for muscle relaxation. Number six on my list for muscle relaxation is to not let your muscles get dehydrated. So yes, hydration, water and electrolytes are absolutely essential for muscle relaxation. So that way, if you're constantly in, uh, consuming water and electrolyte waters, you don't have to worry about getting cramping spasms and those things that are counter to muscle relaxation. All right, guys, final thing, number seven on my list, and then we're gonna get started with class, is massage. Now, when I say massage, obviously the very first thing each and every one of us thinks about is going to a massage therapist. Yes, I recommend body work on a very regular basis for all of my patients, whether that's body work that I'm providing to them or from other healthcare providers that do some sort of massage. But there are other ways to get massage, and we're going to do some of those today in class. Self-massage, we're going to do with a form roller to our spine. You can do self-massage to your own muscles by either rubbing them, by tapping them, or you can use massage tools. So that's the one thing I want to show you real quickly before we move on with class. So there are lots of massage tools on the market today. This is a massage wand so that all you do is simply turn it on, the head vibrates and you can apply it to muscles to relax them. The variability of that intensity goes up and down and then there are massage guns. Now these are hot topics today if you're in the sports and fitness world, but we need to understand that even individuals that are not highly athletic, that their exercise is walking and gardening, sometimes muscles get tight and they need massage. And we don't want to regularly be spilling out the money to see a massage therapist every week or every other week. Massage guns work. So how do massage guns work? They do two things. They oscillate your muscles. So they increase the hydration between the tissues and they increase your blood flow. So they increase the blood to the muscles. I really like this particular massage gun because it is made by fellow physical therapists. This is the Bob and Brad massage gun, but there's tons out there 
This particular tool comes with a bunch of different attachments for different types of massages. Guys, it doesn't matter what tools you're using as long as you're not hurting yourself. But here's the cool thing with massage guns. When you turn them on, they oscillate, they vibrate. You can use them over muscles. Any muscles of your body that are long and are tight from over-exercising or maybe because you're not moving at all, they're very good and they have differences of intensity of vibration. So if you're highly athletic and your muscles are really, really, really tight, or maybe what's wrong is you're taking a statin. Yes, guys, cholesterol medications cause muscle tightness. Then sometimes these muscle guns work our massage guns work to relax those muscles that are super, super tight and need no more blood flow. So I recommend massage guns as a way to massage. Bob and Brad's massage gun, it's a good one, guys. So maybe check it out. Now, let's quickly review before we get going with class. Number one, yoga and stretching. Number two, progressive muscle relaxation. Number three, magnesium. Number four, cherry juice. Number five, relative rest, ice and heat. Number six, hydration, water and electrolytes. And finally, massage to increase circulation, either by self-massage, a massage gun or wand or a massage therapist. All right, there you have it. Now, find yourself in a seated position. Let's get going with progressive muscle relaxation. So check in that your pelvis is in neutral. So maybe do a tuck or a tilt for me. Once you've done a tuck or a tilt for me, finding that neutral position of your pelvis, sit nice and tall. And then once you've sat nice and tall, hinge at your hips until you feel like there is some weight into your legs. Once you have that position, let's take these hands today and hold a tray in front of you. Gently shrug your shoulders up, rotate your arms and your shoulder blades outward, pull those elbows back and down, give them a nice tight good squeeze. As you squeeze between those shoulder blades, just de-rotate your hands and place your hands back on your thighs, lengthen your neck, settle your chin, rest your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Okay, so one of the areas, believe it or not, that we get a lot of muscle tension because of stress is our face. So we're going to start with progressive muscle relaxation of our face. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to scrunch up your nose and scrunch up your eyes and make the ugliest face that you can. Close your eyes so tight that you can't even see through them. Hold that position right there. Make sure you haven't lost that long neck and that tucked in chin. As you're scrunching up that face, take a nice deep inhale. Now hold your breath for five, four, three, two, one. Keep scrunching. Now, as you slowly exhale, imagine every bit of tension coming out of those face muscles. You've got it. Now, go to your jaw. Go to your mouth. Approximate your teeth. Once you've done that, start to clench your jaw. So that's your masseter muscle, your temporalis muscles. Get those muscles really fully contracted. While you fully contract those muscles, here's what I want you to do. Take a nice deep inhale in. Hold five, four, three, two, one. Slowly exhale, slowly open the jaw just a little bit. Relax those muscles. All right, just the eyes this time. Can you close your eyes? And close the eyelids really, really, really tight, but don't squint your face. Yes, that's hard to do. I really want you to focus on that. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Nice and tight with those lids. Take a deep inhale in. Hold your breath. Five, four, three, two, one. And then exhale and open those beautiful eyes that you have. All right. Let's bring that progressive muscle relaxation down the body here. So let's take these shoulders, shrug them up to your ears. Can you wear them as earrings for a second? Something you don't normally hear me say. Get them way up there. Take a deep inhale in. Hold your breath. Five, four, three, two, one. And ah, relax those shoulders down. All right. Biceps. Take your arms. Curl your arms nice and tight. 
Get your fists made, pull those fists towards your shoulders, squeeze those biceps as much as you can. Take a nice deep inhale in. Hold your breath, five, four, three, two, one. And as you slowly exhale through that nose, gently straighten those arms out. You've got it now with those wrists. Pull those wrists down into flexion. Take those thumbs, place them inside the fingers if your thumb joints are okay. If you have a lot of arthritis in those thumb joints, place the thumbs outside the fingers. Now in this position, curl those wrists down, tighten those fists, take a deep inhale in, hold your breath, five, four, three, two, one, and as you exhale through the nose, open the wrists, open the fingers, you've got it. All right, let's move down to the body now. So take your left hand today and place it off the side of your bolster. Once you have it off the side of your bolster, we're going to counterweight by moving our right leg out to the side. So maybe place your leg so that the bottom of your knee is somewhere near the corner of your bolster. If you're sitting on pillows, that's okay. Just gently let your leg kind of fall straight out to the side on the right side. Now, can you gently take that left hand that's on the floor and walk it back a little bit so that if you can kind of imagine right toes, knee, hip, trunk, shoulder, and left hand and elbow all kind of line up in the same direction. All right, here's what we're going to do. Take a nice deep inhale, reach that right arm up. And then as you eat, exhale, lengthen all the way over your body. Now, we're not going to contract really tight here, but here's what I want you to do. I really want you to focus on this for a second. Take your pelvis and try to tuck your tailbone under right now. So you'll feel your abdominals contract. You may even feel some stretching through the side of your body. Hold that position. Take a nice deep inhale in. Hold your breath. Five, four, three, two, one. Now exhale, point your toes away, lengthen away, maybe even gaze at your fingertips. Staying right there, give me a beautiful deep inhale into your belly. And exhaling out. One more time. Nice deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. Right arm. Inhale, lifting it up. And then exhale, dropping it down. Bringing that right foot in. And let's repeat that all over on the opposite side. So take your right uh, hand off the bolster first. And then left leg goes up and out to the side of your bolster, kind of towards one of the corners of your yoga mat. Once you have that position, take your right hand and kind of walk it back a little bit so that you can get that beautiful alignment between left foot, knee, hip, trunk, shoulders, right elbow, and right wrist. Okay, you're ready. Let's move on to this particular progressive muscle relaxation. So left hand, take a nice deep inhale, lift the arm up, and then as you exhale, bend up and over. Imagine getting that length through the entire left side of the muscles of your trunk. Now, in this position, here's what I want you to do. Tuck that tailbone under. It's kind of like you're doing a sit-up, but not really. Tuck it under. Feel that little bit of stretch to the side of your rib cage. Hold that tuck under with that pelvis. Give me a nice deep inhale here. Hold it for five four, three, two, one, and then exhale and length the toes, lengthen the fingertips, gaze all the way at those fingers. Holding right here, nice deep inhale into the belly and exhaling out. Beautiful left hand, inhaling it all the way up and then as you exhale, dropping it down, sliding that left leg back in. Now, in this position sitting, what I want you to do is gently bring both of your legs out to the side. As you bring your legs out to a wide angle, don't worry if your heels are on your yoga mat or not, not going to make a difference for what we're going to do next. In this position, now take your right hand to the inside of your right thigh, the left hand to the inside of your left thigh. So you kind of have made a bind with your hands and your thighs. Very good. Now keeping that wide legged stretch, so getting nice, good elongation through those inner thigh muscles, we're going to go through an assisted or a modification of a cat cow here. So take an inhale, roll your pelvis forward. Hello, inner thigh muscles. Straighten your 
arms as straight as you can, lift your chest as much as you can, lengthen your neck and look up. And then as you exhale, really let that pelvis roll back, really sit your rib cage behind you, but hold on with your hands. Chin to chest, gaze at your belly button. Okay, let's do that two more times. Inhale, roll that pelvis forward. Hello, inner thigh muscles. Lift that chest gaze, comes up. And then exhale, curling and curling and curling. You're getting a great tricep workout if you were curious. One more time. Inhale, rolling all the way forward. And exhaling, curling all the way down. Beautiful. Come back to neutral. Bring those legs in. Once you have your legs in, allow yourself to kind of sweep your feet to one side. And once you've swept your feet to one side, take your bolster and just move it off to the side of your yoga mat. And once you have it off to the side of your yoga mat, check in that your knees are hip distance here. And once you have your knees hip distance, line up your feet with your knees so that you get that hip distance between the ankles and the and the feet and make sure you can't see your ankles or your feet on the inside or the outside. Now we're done with that progressive neuromuscular relaxation to the end of the class. Time to do that yoga and stretching that's on our muscle relaxation list, right? So in this position, allow yourself to bring your hands forward so that your wrists and your elbows are directly underneath your shoulders. Line up those index fingers with the top of your mat. Pull those thumbs inward in a nice, good position. All right, let's go through three cat cows here. So in this position, allow yourself to let your belly sink, lift the tailbone, shoulder blades come back and down, lift the chest, lengthen the neck and look up. And then on your exhale, pull the belly up and in, arch the back, tuck the tailbone under, spread those shoulder blades, chin to chest, gaze into that belly button. Really spread. Here we go, inhale. Sink and sink and sink and sink and lift that tailbone and lift that head. And then on that exhale, curl and curl and curl and curl and get that chin to the chest and tuck that tailbone under. One more time here. Sinking, sinking, sinking. How far can you sink and open that front of your body? And then on your exhale, curling everything completely under. Tuck, 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 tuck. Now, can you stay in your real angry cat here? And just kind of start to walk your hands back as you sit your sit bones down onto your heels. And then stay in your angry cat and bend your elbows and slowly bring the belly to the chest. I mean, belly to the thighs, chest to the knees, and the crown of the head to the floor. Oh, yeah. So child's pose, great muscle relaxation for all of the spinal and gluteal muscles. So allow yourself to stay right here for a moment. Begin to kind of settle into this position. Rest your hands underneath the crown of your head if your head does not meet the floor. And let's go through a nice couple belly breaths to open up through our low back here. So take a nice deep inhale into your belly. And then exhaling out. Deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. Wonderful. Slowly bring yourself back up onto your hands and knees. As you're walking your hands forward, walk your right hand forward as literally as high as you can make it without letting your hips come in front of your knees. So try to keep that alignment of your hips with your knees and walk that right hand forward. Take that left hand and line it up right behind that right hand. Take a nice deep inhale here. And as you exhale, sit the left elbow down on your mat. Now use the traction of your left hand. Take a deep inhale. And as you exhale, push down into your right hand and try to sit back. Man, that's such a great opening through that shoulder, that rib cage. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin, gaze back down towards your knees. Give me a nice deep inhale here. Then exhale, one more breath here, nice deep inhale, and exhale. And then left hand, push yourself back up onto hands and knees, walk your hands on over to the right side of your yoga mat, reach that left hand as high as you can, keeping the hips stacked on top of the knees. Once you have that, take your right hand, line it directly behind that left hand, 
Take a nice deep inhale here. And as you exhale, slowly drop that right elbow down onto the floor. One more nice deep inhale here. And as you exhale, sit back, but push down into that left hand. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin, gaze at your knees. Feel that opening through that left shoulder, that left rib cage. Take a deep inhale into the belly here. And exhaling out. One more time. Nice, deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling out. Slowly straightening through that right hand, walking your hands back so that they're underneath your shoulders. Once you're in this position, here's what I want you to do. Let's do a little bit of crawling today. Now, did you know that crawling is one of the best exercises to retrain your body's reciprocation if you've had any sort of injury to your spine? A lot of people don't know that, but let's see if we can do this. So here's what I want you to think. You're going to pull your left, you're going to pull your left knee forward as you walk your right hand forward. See if you can do those two things together. You got it. Now bring them back. So bring the left knee back, the right hand back. Try the opposite side. So you're going to pull your right knee forward as you move your left knee, your left hand forward, and then bring them back. All right. So walk yourself back on your yoga mat so that you can do two crawl steps forward. Let's try this. So we're going to try it two different, two different times here. So we'll start with the left knee and the right hand. So left knee, right hand, right knee, left hand. That's it. And backwards. Right knee, left hand. <laughs> left knee, right hand. Yes, it's a lot of motor work, isn't it? Line your knees back up, line your hands back up. Let's start with the right knee and the left hand this time. Move and crawl yourself forward. Great abdominal work. Left knee, right hand, bring it forward. All right, now stay at the top of your mat. Line your hands with the top of your mat. Line your knees up. Once you have yourself way up here at the top of your mat, drop yourself down onto your elbows. Once you drop yourself down onto your elbows, once you drop yourself down onto your elbows, take your right leg and bring that right leg straight back on the mat. Now you moved yourself enough forward. Hopefully your right leg is still completely on your mat so you have traction. Can you take a quick look at your left leg and make sure that it's perpendicular to the floor and you haven't dropped your pelvis or dropped your hip out to the side? Now push into your elbows a little bit so that you're engaging through your shoulder blades. Look back at your right heel and make sure that the outside of the foot lines up with the outside of the mat. All right, tuck your tailbone gently under. Really, really brace and engage through your abdominal muscles. Straighten your right leg. Take a deep inhale here. And then as you exhale, sit that heel back as hard as you can. Beautiful elongation and stretching and muscle relaxation through the calf muscles. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin, gaze down somewhere between your elbows. Give me two breaths here. So a nice deep inhale into the belly. Deep exhaling out. One more time. Nice deep inhale in. And exhaling out. Beautiful. Release the tension into the right leg. Bring the right knee back to stack hip distance. Let's do the same thing on the left. So staying on your elbows, allow yourself to bring that left leg straight back. Check in that. The hip stays on top of the knee and you haven't let your hip fall out to the side or rotate your pelvis. Gaze back at your left foot. Once you gaze back at your left foot, make sure that the outside of the foot lines up with the outside of your mat. Push between those shoulder blades, engage those shoulders, lengthen the neck, settle the chin and gaze between the knee or between the elbows. I don't know how you'd gaze between the knees there. <laughs> and then allow yourself to gently tuck your tailbone under a bit, brace through your abdominals, straighten that left knee, take a deep inhale here and exhale, push that heel back. Oh, hello, stretch and muscle relaxation to your calf muscles. Holding yourself right here, give me a nice deep inhale in and exhaling out. One more time, deep inhale in. And exhaling out. Beautiful. Pull that left knee back in. Walk yourself back up onto your elbows. I mean, hands. Once you've walked yourself back up onto your hands, 
try one set of crawls backwards. So maybe left knee and right hand, and then right knee and left hand. All right, now that you're there, now that you're in that position, allow yourself to slowly sit back onto your heels. Once you sit back onto your heels, slowly walk your hands forward. So don't keep your elbows bent this time. Let's do a nice good length through the shoulders since we're not really targeting tons and tons of muscle relaxation of the upper body. Can you walk your fingertips forward enough that you can gently push your sit bones back towards your heels? And then can you just very gently relax your neck down between your arms? Take a gaze back. Make sure that those silly little toes didn't fall together again. And give me a nice deep inhale here in this beautiful child's pose. And exhaling out. Nice deep inhaling in. And exhaling out. Beautiful. Then walk your hands back onto the mat so that you're in a kneeling position if that's comfortable for you. And time to grab your either foam roller or rolled up towels, whichever you're going to do. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to place them in the center of your yoga mat so that the top of the towel or the top of the foam roller is about a half a foot or six inches from the top of your mat. Now, I'm going to show you the easy way, the finessed way to get on a foam roller. Obviously, if this is the towels, it's a little bit easier to get on towels than it is a foam roller. But oftentimes what I see patients doing to get on their foam roller, if they're going to lay on it, is they bring their tailbone to the end and then they pull themselves down, creating a lot of uncontrolled flexion to their back. So I want to show you a little bit more of a finessed way to get on it without really causing any harm. So on your towels, come down to the very end of the towels. On your foam roller, come down to the very end of your foam roller. Once you're there, allow yourself to rest your knees down towards the floor. Then very slowly, let yourself drop your elbow next to the foam roller at the same time as you straighten your top leg out. Once your shoulder touches the foam roller, it is a beautiful little symphony to roll yourself over onto your back, but it's very easy to do without any compression through your low back. So you at home, you're either on those rolled up towels or a foam roller. If you're on a foam roller, make sure that the skull is touching as is the tailbone or the pelvis. Now, we're not doing movements on our foam roller today. This is a muscle relaxation class. So when we talk about using foam rollers for muscle relaxation, it's regarding the paraspinal muscles that we're tackling here and really the spine itself. So paraspinal muscles are muscles that run parallel to your spine. So they're named pretty easily, aren't they? And so what we're gonna do now is we're going to take the first few moments just to work on breathing and allow the spine to relax. And then I'm going to teach you a lovely thing on your towel or your foam roller to relax the muscles of your spine. So make sure that your knees are bent and your feet are flat on the floor. You can have your feet as wide as you want, but I wouldn't have them any narrower, any narrower, that's tough to say, then the width of your mat so that you've got really good balance while you're on your foam roller. The, if your feet are too far, too close together, oftentimes you're really working a lot of muscle strategies to balance yourself. This isn't a balance thing on the foam roller today, it's muscle relaxation. So once you have yourself there, literally take your hands to your head and pull your head away from your neck so that the back of your head, also known as your occiput, is resting on the foam roller and on the towel. You're already beginning to create length through the back of that neck. Let that chin gently settle into the throat as you're doing that. Now with your arms, 
All we're going to do is gently rest our arms out to the side of our body. How high you bring your arms is completely up to you. I want us to relax our spinal muscles and not get overwhelmed with trying to stretch out your pectoralis or your chest muscles. So I would encourage just keeping your arms gently down somewhere near your side today. Make sure that neck stays long, that chin stays relaxed and tucked into the throat. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go down to your tailbone. Now that you're kind of focusing on that tailbone area, I want you to try to do like a Kegel type of exercise so that you can really understand a lot of us keep tension down there that we don't even know is there. So if you could imagine yourself peeing right now and you tried to stop pee, tighten those muscles for a second, hold them, and then try to relax them. All right, let's do that with breath. So take a nice deep inhale in. Tighten those muscles of your pelvic floor. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Now, as you exhale, literally let your entire pelvic floor relax. Let's do the same thing with our buttock muscles here. So take a moment to figure out how to squeeze your buttock muscles on a foam roller. So when you squeeze them, you'll feel your pelvis lift a little bit off the towel or off the foam roller. So allow yourself to take a nice deep inhale in, tighten and squeeze those gluteal muscles. Yes, they are different than just your pelvic floor. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Now when you exhale, pull completely let your butt muscles relax. Now stay right where you are. Pay attention to the part of your spine in the middle of your spine that's in contact with the foam roller. And then feel just below it. So it might be somewhere in your upper low back. It might be a little lower in your back. But there is likely somewhere in your low back area right now that is, of course, not touching that foam roller. Start to pay attention to that area. And then take a slow, deep inhale into your belly. Feel that area come closer, if not touch that foam roller. And then as you exhale, exhale, just let your belly relax. We're going to do that two more breaths. Inhaling, focus on what is not touching the foam roller. And exhaling and letting that entire spine melt onto that foam roller. One more time. Deep inhale into the belly. And then as you exhale, just let that spine melt down onto that foam roller. Now, here's what we're going to do. I want you to imagine in your mind for a second, a wrinkled shirt, a really wrinkled shirt. As you picture that wrinkled shirt, I want you to imagine a nice, good, hot iron on an ironing board. If you took that wrinkled shirt and that hot iron and you place that hot iron over that shirt and started to move it around, the wrinkles start to come out of the shirt. So what we're going to do with this foam roller, the wrinkled shirt are the muscles on the side of your spine. The hot iron is the foam roller. And so all I want you to do is very gently shift your weight to your right foot and your right elbow and your right hand as you roll the foam roller a little bit to the side of the muscle of the spine. And then shift your weight to the left foot, the left hand, the left elbow as you roll over to the right muscles. And so imagine as you're rolling left to right, right to left, at about the speed that you would iron a cotton shirt. So not so fast that it's not getting the wrinkles out but not so slow that you're scorching that cot, right? I'm sure you've maybe done that in the past. I certainly have. 
So just a gentle oscillation of rolling and ironing side to side. Can you check in that your neck is long and your chin is settled? That's it. Keep rolling a few more times, just a few more times. And as you're rolling, literally visualize those muscles unwrinkling, relaxing. That's what we want to happen right now. Very, very nice. All right, time to get off of the foam roller. So generally muscle relaxation on a foam roller or a towel, you wanna do it for a minimum of four to five minutes. I like to encourage that relaxation of the spine first, nice good diaphragmatic breathing, and then ending with that ironing of the paraspinal muscles. Very good. Now simply allow yourself to fall off the front or the back of your foam roller. So it's not the most elegant Thing, but if you roll to the side onto your elbow, you can gently fall off of the bolts of the roll without it looking like, you know, you're going to fall and injure something to the floor. <laughs> then gently move your foam roller away from you. Bring yourself back into that child's pose. Now imagine all those wrinkles that you just got rid of in those muscles. Let's really find the length in them this time. So get your knees hip distance, gaze back at the feet are hip distance, settle the sit bones down towards the heels. You've got it. Allow yourself in this kneeling position to take a nice deep inhale and then on the exhale, tuck the tailbone under and then sequentially curl the spine down. Oh man, I feel that beautifulness already. Bring the belly down onto the thighs, the chest down onto the knees. Crown of the head to the floor, and then walk those hands forward. Oh, now staying in this position, after ironing out and rolling out those muscles, let's stay here for three awesome breaths. So take a deep inhale into your belly. Slowly exhale out through that nose. Deep inhale into the belly. And slowly exhaling out. One more breath. Deep inhaling in. And slow, slow exhaling out. And gently push yourself up into hands and knees just to transition to lay on your side. Once you're laying on your side, allow yourself to roll over on your back. Get yourself in a nice, good, comfortable back position for you. So feel those shoulder blades underneath you. Feel that pelvis in a nice, good, neutral position. Lengthen the neck, settle the chin, and let's keep this muscle relaxation train going to the lower legs. So let's take our right knee to our chest, hands around that shin bone. Take a deep inhale here. And then as you exhale, pull that knee to your chest. With that left leg, inhale, kick that leg up into the air. And then as you exhale, slowly lower it down onto the mat. All right, now. Nice, deep inhale into the belly. And then as you exhale, very gently use your arms and your biceps to pull that knee into your chest. Keep that neck long. Keep that chin settled. Deep inhale into the belly. Exhaling as you gently bring that knee into your chest. One more time. Nice, deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling, you've got it. Left leg, slowly slide it up the mat and then relax the right foot to the floor. Left knee, take an inhale, bring it up to your chest. And as you exhale, gently bringing it to the chest, hands are around the knee. One from the next, settle the chin. Let's go to this right leg. Can you inhale and kick that leg in the air? And as you exhale, slowly lower it down to the mat. 
now. Nice deep inhale into the belly. Neck is long, chin is tucked. Exhale, pull that knee in. Deep inhale into the belly. Exhaling knee to chest. One more time here. Nice deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling knee to chest. Slowly taking that right leg and sliding that leg up the mat and then resting the left foot onto the floor. All right, a muscle relaxation class. We are going to try to do butterfly pose. Now, for some of you, that is not something that's possible to do. So I'm going to show you how you're going to do your butterfly pose. Everybody else, I want you to try full butterfly pose butterfly pose with me. So here's what I want you to do. Take your left foot and walk your left foot so that you feel like it's in the center of the mat. And then take your right leg and cross your leg all the way over your left leg. Now in that position, if you have enough hip flexibility that your inner thighs are touching, I think you can try butterfly pose. If you're that person at home right now that there is a space between your thighs, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take your hands and grab that right knee and bring the right knee up towards the chest and simply let your left leg slide down onto the floor. So you are in that position if you cannot get your legs to completely cross. Everyone that can get their legs to completely cross, let's go for butterfly. So take a nice deep inhale and on the exhale, pull your knees to your chest and you're focusing on that right knee coming to your chest. Now, this is a little complicated, so let's do this together. Figure out which hand is your left hand. Figure out which foot is your right foot. Hold them together. Those of you that have just the right knee to your chest, Take your left hand right now and bring it to your right ankle. Figure out which one is your right hand. Figure out which one is your left foot. Aha, now you're getting the premise of butterfly pose here. So if you're doing butterfly pose, you've got your left hand on your right ankle and your right hand on your left ankle. If you're doing the modification, you have your right knee to the chest, the right hand, is holding the right knee to the chest and the left hand is on the right ankle. All right, regardless of which one you're doing, lengthen your neck, settle your chin, take a nice deep inhale, and then as you exhale, gently pull the ankles towards the shoulders. You have it. Now take a deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhale into the belly and exhaling out. Those of you in full butterfly pose, relax and let go of the left ankle first and drop the left foot to the floor. Those of you in modified, butter pose, <laughs> modified butter butterfly pose, let go of the right ankle first, line up the leg, and then bring the right foot down to the floor. Good, let's do opposite side, shall we? So walk the right foot to the center of your mat. Left leg comes up and over. Again, is there no space between your thighs? If there's no space between your thighs, give butterfly a chance. If there is a space between your thighs because your outer hips and your hips are too tight, go to the modification. So you're gonna focus on just bringing the left knee up to the chest, and you're going to be pulling just with the left foot on the right hand. Okay? So you pick which one is right for you. Those of you attempting butterfly today, let's take a nice deep inhale. And as we exhale, brace and pull that right knee and left knee towards your chest. Get the left knee in the center of your chest. Okay. Now, in this position, figure out which one is your right hand and your left foot and grab them to one another. Then figure out which is your left hand and your right foot and grab them. 
Hello, butterfly pose. <laughs> All right, so if you're that person that's doing the modification, your left hand is still on your left knee, your right hand is on your left foot. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Let's take a nice deep inhale. Exhale, pull those ankles towards those shoulders. Muscle relaxation. So we better do some breathing here. So take a nice deep inhale into your belly. Exhaling slowly, slowly out. One more time. Deep inhale into the belly. And exhaling and relaxing. Those in full butterfly, a left hand, release it from the right foot and place the right foot back down onto the floor. Those in the modification, slowly let go of the right ankle and then line it up and then drop your left foot to the floor. Very nice. Now, right leg, slide it straight down the mat. Left foot on top of the right thigh, right hand, reach for that left knee. Left hand out to the side of your body. Take a nice deep inhale here. Spinal twist. As you exhale, pull that left knee to the right. Feel the pelvis lift. Sequentially, the low back is next. That rib cage is next. Left shoulder blade stays on the mat. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Turn your chin towards your left shoulder. Gaze at your left thumb. And take a nice deep inhale into your belly here. And then exhaling out. One more nice deep inhaling in. And then exhaling out. Slowly bringing your head back to the center. Start at that rib cage, unrotating rib cage, then the low back, then the pelvis, placing the left foot on the floor, sliding the right leg up, left foot now straight down onto the mat, left leg, right foot onto the left thigh, left hand for the right knee, right hand out to the side of the body, taking a nice deep inhale here, and then on that exhale, pulling that right knee to the left, feel that sequential rotation, pelvis lifts, low back lifts, rib cage lifts, right shoulder blade stays down, lengthen your neck, settle your turn, chin, turn your chin towards your right shoulder, and gaze towards that right thumb. Nice deep inhale into your belly, and then exhaling out. And one more time, deep inhaling in and exhaling out. Slowly bringing your head back to the center, starting to derotate that spine, rib cage first, low back second, pelvis third, hip fourth. You got it. Place the right foot on the floor, slide the left leg up for a moment. Kind of reposition yourself. Make sure you feel like you're centered on your yoga mat. Bring both knees up to your chest for a nice good hug. Take a deep inhale and exhale. Pull those knees to your chest. Lengthen your neck. Settle your chin. Give me a nice deep inhale into the belly here. And then exhaling out. And then gently placing the right foot to the floor, the left foot to the floor. Sliding the left heel and the right heels down to the corners of the mat. All right, back to number one thing to do for muscle relaxation. Progressive muscle relaxation or progressive neuromuscular relaxation, whichever way you look at it. This time we're not starting at the top, this time we're starting at the bottom. So get yourself nice and settled in Savasana pose. Once you feel like you're there, let's start with our toes and our feet. So curl your toes under, point your feet away from you. Take a deep inhale here. Hold your breath for five, four, three, two, one. Slow exhale out through the nose as you relax those toes and relax those feet. Going in the opposite direction. So point the toes up towards the head. Point the ankles up towards the head. Take a deep inhale here. Hold five, four, three, two, one, and relax the toes, relax the ankles. All right, go to your knees and tighten your knees really tight, so tight that you feel those heels lift off the floor. Take a deep inhale here. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one, and slowly relax those legs onto the mat. And go up to your buttocks. 
Squeeze your buttocks really tight, lift that pelvis up, take a nice deep inhale in. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale and melt that pelvis and those gluteal muscles down onto the yoga mat. You've got it. All right, go to your hands, curl those fingers into fists, add the thumbs. Squeeze really tightly, take a deep inhale in. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. And as you exhale, relax those fingers out. Let the tension of the muscles melt. Go to your elbows and straighten your elbows. Feel your arms lift off of the mat. Hold, take a deep inhale in. Hold it here for five, four, three, two, one, and then relax the arms down onto the mat. Go to your shoulder blades. Take a deep squeeze and pull those shoulder blades together. Feel that rib cage lift. Inhale here. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. And as you exhale, shoulder blades relax. The entire spine melts down onto the mat. Moving up to your head and your face. Go to your jaw and your mouth and close your mouth, approximate your teeth, clench your jaw, take a deep inhale, hold it for five, four, three, two, one. And as you exhale, let every jaw muscle go. Go up to your eyes and squint your eyes really tight. Maybe even feel the squinting happening in your forehead and nose. Take a deep inhale. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. And as you exhale, relax every bit of tension of those muscles out of your face. Lengthen the neck, settle the chin. Take that skull and gently push it down into your yoga mat. Feel your spinal muscles engage. Take a deep inhale here. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. And as you exhale, relax that skull, relax the spine. You have accomplished progressive muscle relaxation. And keep your body still. Gently inhale and exhale. Feel that soft, gentle movement of your belly upwards on every inhale. Slow drop of the belly on every exhale. Maybe even say to yourself, Inhaling when you feel that belly rise and exhaling when you feel that belly drop. All right, let's start to wiggle these fingers and these toes and do some circles with these ankles and these wrists. And then when you're ready, gently slide one leg up followed by the other leg. Allow yourself to slowly roll over onto your side. Rest yourself there for just a moment. Just check in with your body. Maybe even check in with your mind. Did relaxing your muscles today also put you in a state of ease? And when you're ready on an exhale, bottom hand, I mean, bottom elbow, top hand, push yourself up into a seated position. Find yourself in an easy pose, legs crossed, hands are to your heart. Oh man, do I feel good. I hope you do at home as well. <laughs> Let's take a nice deep inhale and exhale. 
Namaste. The highest in me salutes the highest in you. Thank you so much for joining me today. 